I'm Tom from DIY Life Tech, and this is a look at choosing a between an inflatable and a plastic kiddie pool. Um, so the, the, way, the way to look at that really is, uh, you know, a couple of different factors. This is a plastic pool. It's a rigid plastic pool. Super easy to set up. Um, you don't have to be inflating it by hand or with an inflator. Um, and you can just basically dump it when you're done using it, put it away. Um, the advantages there are, uh, you know, obviously you... Uh, you don't have to do all that work whenever you're going to use the pool. The disadvantage, though, is that you can't deflate it and fold it up really small and store it easily. Um, it's going to be, you know, basically this size no matter uh, what you do. So they're sort of limited in size with the rigid plastic ones versus the inflatable pools can be much, much bigger. Um, it can have things like slides and other special features because you can deflate it, fold it up at the end of the season or, you know, after you're done using it, um, and then, you know, reinflate it again in the future. Um, the one thing also to consider, though, is that, you know, if you're going to use this for other functions like bathing your dog, which a lot of people like to do, um, then it's nice to have one that is rigid like this because their sharp toenails can definitely pop an inflatable pool. And if you're going to go with an inflatable pool, um, vinyl is usually the, the stronger option. Um, if you just get a basic plastic or a PVC one, then uh, the issue with that is that it can also, again, especially if it's on a rough surface like this concrete, you risk uh, being, you know, popping it. So good to go with something that's, uh, that's either, you know, vinyl or stronger material to inflate it. Um, or uh, to go for a rigid pool. And I like the rigid ones just for, again, ease of setup. Um, it's much more sort of impervious to damage, but it's gonna be a more basic, usually just a saucer-shaped pool like this.